Hi, my name is Alon Barr, and I'm the director and writer of Plastic Regions. And I'm so thrilled to have the opportunity to work with three amazing stars. Enrico Colantoni plays Phil Roussel. This you may recognize him from shows like Veronica Mars and Josh Shoot. You can't take it back. It's already out there. It's too late. <laughs> Elliot, you look awful. Are you all right? Yes. Oh. I just... I just... I can't breathe. <laughs> I gotta get ready. <laughs> Is there no one on your planet who behaves in a way that's contrary to reality. You are speaking of deception, deception lies. lies. We have only recently become aware of this concept in our dealings with Ceres. Often Ceres will say one thing and do another, promise us mercy, but deliver destruction. It is a concept we are beginning to learn at some great cost. But if you are saying that any of you could have traits in common with Ceres, <laughs> well, Amy Pitts plays the part of Gina Roussel, Phil's wife, and she was featured on TV shows like ER and Ally McBeal. Robert Halleck plays the part of Nick Dillon and is known for his theater work with Lee Strasberg and his many television appearances. Saudi Arabia. Izzat is my friend. The feast refers to my niece's wedding. Don't sell this guy your camera. You think I was born yesterday? This guy's your shell. He's not my shell. I've never seen him before in my life. What, would they teach you that line in shell school? Hey, this guy's got a freaking shell! <laughs> Plastic Bridges is a comedy. A romantic comedy. Sort of a, a, a little bit of touch of magic, if you will. It's about three old best friends, Gina, Nick, and Phil. In high school in New Jersey. In New Jersey. Or New Jersey, depending on where you come from. They all went to high school in New Jersey together. Nick and Gina dated in high school. But now Phil and Gina are married, and Nick hasn't seen either one of them for 15 years. I play Phil Ruscello, who's married to Gina Ruscello. Um, and Phil's an architect who's very busy and he's about to close the biggest deal of his life. But he's so busy he really doesn't have time to deal with the things at home. He barely sees his wife who's beautiful. He barely knows his children who are incredibly beautiful. And he lives there more as a roommate than anything else. I play the part of Gina Ruscello, uh, a mom, a wife, a career woman and someone who's about to lose the biggest deal of her life at the company she works for. Her and Phil's marriage isn't even on the rocks. It's more like under one. And it's sad to me. I play the role of Nick Dillon. Nick is a photojournalist who's on a bit of a hiatus and decides to drive his old red Chevrolet cross country. Well, the old red clunker has different ideas and blows up in the middle of the Mojave Desert where he is left completely stranded. He catches a ride with this crazy courier, excuse me, messenger, who's a bit of a clairvoyant. She takes him, drops him off in the middle of Sierra Madre where he gets run over by an SUV. Here he is lying on the ground. Like an overturned turtle as he sees Gina get out of the very truck that just hit him. And then Phil shows up and it's like one big high school reunion. Phil, I mean, can't let Nick just stay in a hotel, but Gina could. She's really not thrilled that Phil is insisting that Nick take refuge on the couch, which is really the guest room. Before long, we find out that Nick and Gina had another reunion eight years earlier. Back in Chicago, but Phil doesn't know anything about it. It was nothing, really. It was nothing, really. It was nothing, really. They had a few drinks and dinner, shared a few laughs and slept. Together, ignorance is bliss, right? What Phil doesn't know, While on the couch, Nick begins to bond with the Russello's seven-year-old son, Joey, 
who happens to look a lot like Nick when he was seven years old. Math isn't Nick's strongest suit, but he starts to add things up and he realizes that maybe Joey is his son. So he goes on this quest to find out if in fact Joey has his genes. And I don't mean Levi's. The pressure gets to Gina. She's starting to lose it. And Phil, well, he's building the biggest bridge of his life. And Gina finally decides to come clean and tell Phil about the little thing that happened in Chicago. All hell breaks loose now, and Phil starts to question who Joey's dad really is. Phil blames Nick, Phil blames Gina, then he begins to blame himself. When the dust settles, Nick is on the road again. And the Rochellos are still together. Because, really, if it doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger. As Nick waits by the side of the road, the same courier from the beginning of the movie delivers him an envelope. It's the DNA results. He takes a peek at the letter, takes a look at the results, closes it back up, and gives it back to the courier and sends her down to the Rosellos. Phil is in the yard shredding leaves when he gets the delivery. He sees that it's from a DNA testing, and he smiles, and without even looking at it, rips it into a thousand pieces. Okay, he rips it into a million pieces. The end. A tearjerker. It's a happy ending. Go home and Tell your friends it's a great movie ending. Go home and tell your friends it's a great movie ending. Or go home and email all your friends and tell them to go out, run out, and see Plastic Bridges at a theater near you soon.